Broadcasting on Star Worldwide Networks. It's Two Small Biz Guys. And now, here are your hosts, Zen Benefiel and Ray Silverstein. Well, here we are again. And it's you. Again. And it's me again. It's again. I'm still Zen. We're us's. We're us's. And not, not, not fusses or buses, we're us's. And us's. Us's. So we have a great t subject today. We do, but before we get to talking about business without the bullshit, we're, we're going to. That's no bullshit now, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'd actually like to uh, mention that, you know, we've got a great show, with, and obviously our numbers are, are high. Imagine what that's you as a listener or potential um, sponsor, guest, what we could do for you in giving you uh, as a sponsor 100,000 listens you know more you than to, that more than that well actually it, that's true uh, 100,000 listens plus you know you're you you're, get a you're, quarter you're understating you're a conservative person I, I, I understate and over deliver that's my reputation what you deliver good I'll call you for a pizza yeah I, and, I, and I could deliver as long as it's it, cheese I know but it, it's, it's really cheese. cheesy <laughs> no I, I don't want, I want <laughs> no, we're cheesy more. right I like something a little bit fancier than that okay well that, that's okay, possible well, let's go back to the it's actually 150,000 plus when I calculate it but go ahead oh and here's the numbers guys so if you want to know more about that just go to two small and look for the engage tab and our one sheets there you can download it you can share it and guess what if you know somebody it's even commissionable darn right it's commissionable commissionable it sounds like we're in the army get yeah. commissioned <laughs> well at least we're not one pp okay all right so okay so what are we going to talk about today well we're going to talk about business without the bullshit 49 secrets and shortcuts you need to know and it's a book by jeffrey james right so it's an interesting book is is basically written for people who want to who are employees rather than owners but there's a lot of stuff pertaining to being a good boss and so well, you got to be a good boss if you want to keep the employees that's, that's for sure. right but we're but the, he talks about 49 different items but we're not going to talk about recounts yeah. and discounts yeah, no yeah, that's we're a not, wrong we're not going to talk about all those 49 because okay. we don't want to talk that fast we want to go into more depth yeah that's the lawyer speak on car commercials okay so i'd like to get your thought because you're very holistic and he says I, I, i'm just full of holes okay the attitude of the author is everyone is a freelancer Rather than offering job security, companies now move jobs whenever they can be done more cheaply. Similarly, those who stick with one employer for too long now to seem to be out of touch or lacking in initiative. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's uh, several thoughts that I have about that. First is that in, from a holistic perspective, if you want to continue to have the culture of working together, of collaboration, of achieving collectively as a company, then you really want to be a little more stationary. You know, you're not looking for the cheapest place to do business. Uh, I think that's what got us in trouble with all of the, the jobs moving well, out, out of the country. Okay, the, well, um, there, there is it, an aspect when, you know, it used to be that people would have jobs for life. And then back in the 80s or something. Yeah, my dad used to tell me, uh, find a good company and okay. you know, stick with them and retire. And companies uh, started it's making... It's impossible okay. today. Some companies started laying people off. But you find a lot of smaller businesses, basically, are looking not to have turnover, looking to have people who are going to be there for quite a while. They're looking to create a family. They're looking for this aspect. But he says here, for those who stay with one employer too long, are either out of touch or lacking in initiative. Now that's a very negative viewpoint of people who have a, uh, a both of an employee and employer. If the employer is providing a uh, a, a good, solid, uh, say family type of atmosphere, mm -hmm. giving reasonable benefits, reasonable compensation, are these people really being? Is that really lacking an initiative, or is that? Uh, I mean, this this aspect of freelancer that. Those college students now are taught many times you should change jobs three or four times. You find that it used to be that if you look at a resume and you had four or five moves, no, you're very suspect. Right. Well, it, even and, for my MBA program, they were saying you know it, it's eight career changes in a lifetime now. Well, in the in the recession period, uh, in working with business owners, there was uh, the 
the recruiters basically said if they saw somebody with four or five changes, they wouldn't really consider them at that time. So when the market was very you know, weak for employment, a lot of changes was a negative sign. When the market is very strong, it kind of is not considered. Okay, and that brings up my, my second thought, which is the initiative. If you're going to be looking for work, uh, someone with initiative is not going to stick around if they're not happy or you don't treat them right. You know, and they're, they're going to be moving, so okay, you're going to see that. Well, but okay, that's true, because people leave because of their, generally because of their immediate boss. Now, I will say this, too, that by and large... You will say it, you're going to say it, so I, just I'm, say it. Okay. Um, Speak out. A lot of people are lazy. A lot okay. of people are lazy. I, when no. I've been in the workplace, when I've been in the trenches, there I've I've seen people just, they're complacent, they, they do just what's necessary to get by because they're getting a che check, their safety, uh, or their safety. Okay, they're now is that, is that the responsibility of the individual or is that the responsibility of the boss? You know, I think there's dual responsibility there because a man is not an island to himself. He surrounds himself oh. with the kind of people that he likes to work with and, and depending, or she, and depending on that environment as to whether it supports that or not. Okay. Now, I think the larger the company is, the more tendency there is to be complacent. Okay, but the aspect goes back. One, one of his comments, which I fully agree with, if you look at your weakest employee, if that weakest employee is not up to a satisfactory level, what does that say about you if you're willing to accept that behavior? And well, that's habits? your 20-60-20 rule, right? Yeah, the 20-60-20 the rule, right. But it also, what does it say about you as the boss, the employer, the manager, whatever? And what is it really being fair to the other members of the team, the other members of the organization, by having people who really don't work up to a reasonable level of expectation? That's a great question. Is it fair? Depending on the, the level of expertise and, and uh, I, I want to say, leadership from the leaders of the company, if they're dynamic and they're expressive, they create a culture around that, then you're going to have a much better environment in which to work. Well, but okay, but you, do, you have to be dynamic. You don't have to be dynamic. I think it's a question of equality and, and equity. If you're not treating all of your employees fair, in other words, you're willing to accept bad behavior, you're willing to accept uh, less performance, uh, it's not being fair to the rest of the organization. No, it so, isn't. And, and that, from what, from what I'm seeing, a person, a leader who has who steps beyond that is more of a dynamic leader. They, they bring out, they raise the bar, they encourage initiative, and they reward it. Yeah, correct. They should reward it. They should recognize. Well, the other aspect is not just the financial reward. It's also recognition. And if people don't recognize. No. The other aspect is a lot of people will recognize and reward the outstanding performers. They don't kind of say anything. Don't kind of. You like that? You, you last time you are picking out my word, didn't. Could, so, didn't and couldn't. So, so they. Ooh, that's really close. But the people who perform at a reasonable level should also be recognized. Absolutely. And they, many times they get overlooked. Well, and herein is the reason why most people, as the author states today, everyone's a freelancer. Okay, there's all kinds of new job sites that are out there, websites that have freelancers and evidently are doing quite well because those people with initiative generally outperform everybody else around them and they usually end up outside looking in because they don't get along inside the organization. Okay, his comment is, as a freelancer, your goal must always be to land your next job and hopefully one that's more fun and pays better than the one you already got. Emphasis on the more fun. Well, but no, the emphasis is on- For me. No, okay, for you. But his emphasis is landing the next job, which means turnover. And when you hire somebody, are you looking for turnover? Or are you looking for people to have stability? Well, as uh, an employer, you certainly want the stability. But how are you gonna do that? How are you going to create the foundation which produces the stability and encourages people to stick around? Okay, but his attitude is, I'm just saying his attitude as a freelancer says they're looking for the next job. So your goal as the employer is that you want to create the environment that they're going to stay there. Right. And, you're, and whether it be compensation, no family feeling, holistic uh, management style, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. 
But if the individual says, I'm here just as a short timer, I'm here as a taker, you know, I want to take the learning, I want to take the experience, I want to have something good on my resume. And as you said before, speaking of resume, that, you know, a lot of, of kids today, our college students are, are encouraged to <clears throat> have multiple jobs, to, to do the job turnover so that their resume is better. Well, is that better or worse? Well, today, the more experience you have, the more variety. Is that more experience? In other words, if I if I jump jobs, is that more experience? Well, or if is you that got the thirty years of, doing the same job, you got one year of experience. So, okay, well, not necessarily. So, but if I get most my, often, if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, it you know. The, well, hopefully you move up within the organization. Hopefully you get more. Different, if you have initiative. You get, well, you, you no, know, you have to have competence. You can, yes, you need initiative, but you can be initiative and, and not do the job well. And True. you can be very aggressive. Yeah, then you run into Peter. Oh yes, Peter and Paul. Yeah, don't forget you, about Mary. You know what happened? You know, no, that's right. You know what happens with? Uh, uh, I forgot the line now. Uh, when you get a uh -oh. sore Peter, <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about that. <gasps> Jeez, so, Ray. Oh, okay. So the aspect here is, is that he talks about the being a freelancer, and he also says that you no, know, if you're a boss, a boss is more like a customer, or is more like a client or a customer which means you must manage the relationship. Yeah, I agree with that. You have, the boss has to be able to create an environment. The question is, what is the definition of manage? Uh, is manage being, uh, saying, do this, do this, do this, or is management actually creating the environment? Well, therein is, is the management versus leadership role. And, and today's managers, I think, are more leaders, coaches, um, that they're, capacity for management is based on their ability to create positive relationships in the workplace. Okay, but your term coach is a good term because if you, the, the manager is a coach and therefore the manager can't really go out and play the game. They can only be on the sidelines, create strategy, give teaching, give education, give opportunity, but they can't really play the game. And a person says, do this, do this, do this. They're really playing the game. We, we just got the finger from an engineer. We, we did. A, a triple finger. No, was that three or two? We, we, we got a triple. That, that was my sore Peter move. <laughs> <laughs> so, so our when you are, and, uh, see, our engineer wants to get into the act. Yeah, well, we draw him in every once in a while, and, and he really participates. No, he, he just, he just, he just interrupts. He, he thinks he's a freelancer. Yeah, he certainly does. <laughs> and oftentimes he's... he's I, I expect a 1099 after this is over. You yeah. will. You, you'll get a 1099. <laughs> but the only thing is to be on a pink slip. <laughs> How's that? Uh, you want to see my other finger impression? <laughs> uh, there we go. So, peeking, uh, pinking about slips. Okay. Or slipping about pinks. Yeah, well, what about? When you're in the pink. Yes. Right? That's generally looked at as being, you know, in a good place, right? So... How much pink do you have in your business? Well, the abject, you don't mind having, well, I don't know if you want pink because pink weeds to red. And you want, you're more, inter the you're, you're more interested in gray going to black. So, because you want a business to be in the black. But the aspect here is that he talks about, so let, let's, let's assume that people are freelancers. So if you're the boss and if you're in business, how do you, how do you uh, basically, I'll say, understand, work with, and motivate people who have a freelancer uh, aspect. You give them the opportunity to participate in the creation of the work. Okay. Okay, so you've got a goal. You, you've got X number of widgets, you've got however many you know, graphics or whatever the, the end product or service is. They have to have the opportunity, in my opinion, to be able to almost self-initiate the kind of work and the production capacity that they have toward well, that end goal. I, I think that's kind of because it's better buy-in. Well, I think your statement is kind of you know, uh, they can't always create the work, but I think they have to be a participant in the definition is how things get right, maybe done. Right, I didn't use the, the right and, words, but they're, they're definitely a participant in what they do and how they do it, and you have the, the building of the relationship with the manager right. in that way. And the manager has a relationship with them, bringing them as part of the discussion. 
So in other words, it's a two-way communication, not just one way. Absolutely, and it creates a transparency. And speaking of transparency, we're going to step out of the way here for a moment and share some messages with you. Thanks for listening to Two Small Biz Guys. We'll be right back. Two Small Biz Guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. The digital world is vast. Is it working for you? Would you like some qualified help? Zen Benefiel is a wonder with social media who leads focused and organized workshops on multiple platforms like Facebook, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. He leads by example, not theory, and teaches you how to live large and lively on the web. From blogs to SEO, his web presence speaks for itself. Take advantage of his expertise. Visit BeTheDream.com and click on Web Wizardry. Hire him while you can. Are you a small business owner looking for education and information and don't have time for school? Is there an area of your business you'd like to know more about but aren't sure where to go or who to ask? Practical Biz U is an online repository of small business courses now available to you on the web. There are single class options, bundles for specific areas, and monthly memberships for ongoing learning opportunities. Go to practicalbizu.com and sign up today. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefiel and Ray Silverstein. Hey, welcome back. Make sure you uh, actually take some time. Go visit our website. We've got a bunch of shows there, and all of them absolutely delightful. You know, they're very punny, as you might imagine. Well, imagine not, us punny. not only delightful, they are insightful insightful delightful and uh proactive in, in a lot of cases so it causes you for to take pause oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're going to the pet hotel again okay, huh? but, I just, okay. but okay. also best but, transition on radio i ever heard <laughs> okay but also we have a lot of tools that are very useful that you can get absolutely so and you want them to, where do you want them to go what you two small biz guys dot com and, and is, that, is that a number two? It's a numeral two. Numer numeral. Numeral. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, going back to the subject, he has an interesting comment. He says... Yeah, people trump technology. People trump no technology. No pun intended there. No, that's true. We're, we're not... They don't elect for this, but... No. It's a non-election for technology. But the aspect is, you know, a lot of people talk about having technology in business, that technology kind of rules the road. Right. And he's saying people tech, people trump technology. And, and what it, how he says that is for decades, high tech firms have touted the absurd notion that technology by itself solves problems. Well, I it, it doesn't. Well, the interesting aspect is the technology does solve solve problems. People have to be willing to implement and use it. Technology and is worthless without the people who understand and use it effectively. So this also goes back into the aspect of accepting change. Right. And so this goes back to... I got some pocket Yeah, you change. do. Well, okay, yeah. put it on the table. I'll take a few. Okay. But this goes back to the aspect of change and how you create change because technology is always a fear because it's an unknown. There's an anxiety. Will it replace me? Will I be able to understand it? Will I be able to do it? And what is this going to do to my current environment? What am I going to do to my current job? So it, it, goes it kind back. of goes back to the freelancers in that case, where you know these guys, the, the younger folks, are much more up on technology. You know, you but you want to learn how to use an iPhone? Ask your grandson. Yes, but or in but, your case, your yes, great grandson. But when the next, no, but, that's my case. Okay, but when the next re the next revolution Easy for you comes to say. along, right? Uh, will they be willing to adapt to it? Because once you're in, once you're in a comfort zone, you're not always willing to adapt to the next aspect. And you no, know, the, the byline is that the fear of the fear of change, the f the fear of staying the same, has to be greater than the fear of change. So when people want to stay the same, they get uh, sold on change. They get sold on change when that fear is greater. So right. therefore, people. And when it comes to technology, we talks about people. Uh, you I must agree. have no fear. Yeah, that's right. Luke, you gotta, be, you gotta be bold and step I up. I am your father. Oh, your what was that? You're my father, Luke. Oh, yeah, that Luke. was it. 
Never mind. See, you're, you're into these younger things I don't know about. And Let's talk about Abbott and Costello and uh, who's on Fibber, first? McGee, and Molly. Right. And that's, that's more Tomorrow, my, my today. stuff. Well, right now. Right now, yes. Right now, technology really only increases the speed of which we're able to do things. That's the one advantage. And it gives us the, the capacity to have free time to think about what to do next. You said free time to think about what you do. Next? Well, it's actually expensive, why, but why? it get it frees up because technology has increased our ability to do things faster. Okay, we accomplish more in less time. Oh, well, wait a second. The question is, accomplishing more was do you accomplish the right things. So I mean, just well, that's just an, to do that's more. an assumption that in the business environment you're you've introduced and are utilizing the technology for such purpose. Okay. Okay. Now, granted, you know, you don't always know what it'll do, and sometimes there's a learning curve in, in figuring out what the technology actually does, and maybe you'll find out stuff that you didn't know it did and finally figure it out sometime down the road, and then you truncate the time even more. Okay. But the aspect is... Uh, technology, I agree. We both agree that technology does not trump. Oh my people. God, we agree on something. Yeah, well, that's true. Every now and then, we agree to do the show. So, right. technology doesn't really te trump people. People have to be willing to accept and implement and learn and be trained and to really want to run with it. Otherwise, they'll sink the technology. I mean, uh, you, you. We don't want to play battleship. I, I've seen where I've seen where you people you bring in systems and all of a sudden you have problems. The implementation is very difficult because people don't want to accept it. And there are a lot of older, well-established systems that are so far behind the times because of that. Yeah. They, they. But the aspect is you have to really work with your people to do it. And uh, courage is crucial. Okay, courage is crucial. Darn right. Step up. Be, be brave. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? So he talks about, the author talks about, courage means taking risks to get what you want. And he's talking about the freelancer. Mm -hmm. But also, I think, in whether the person is a freelancer or not, a person in an organization has to have courage to say something won't work uh, or we have to make a change. Right. And it's or, not the same as being fearless. That's right. He says fearlessness is for fools. Well, I like to play the fool a lot because oh. I jump in where nobody else will. Well, However, you are, you are successful in that role. I am immensely successful. <laughs> yes, immensely. But successful. courage, actually, to him, means taking risks to get what you want. So you've got to have an idea of where you're going. It's like we were talking last show about having the roadmap. If you don't know where you're going, any place will do. Yes. Thank you, the Cheshire Cat. Yes. So courage means facing the reality that if you stand up for yourself, you might lose your job. Yeah, but but the aspect is that courage means to present. Okay, the organization also has to have courage to accept ideas. Right, and that's where that the the, the fearlessness or the the courage to stand up for yourself, even though you might lose your job. If you're really a company-oriented person, you want to. You've demonstrated. You've created the, the relationships. You're moving forward with the idea that you're wanting to be helpful to the company. Then that's kind of when you create that atmosphere. Those kind of comments, those kinds of questions, okay. uh, pointing out, you know, what do, situations what do you, okay, but what are do you encouraged. Do? Okay, but what do you do in the situation that somebody has an idea and they don't want to go along with the decision? They they don't want to be part of the team. They say, "My idea is the idea. I have to. We it has to be my idea, or or, or I'm out of here." Is that really a beneficial employee? Uh, yes, you want. Then you've made input. a hiring mistake, haven't you? Well, possibly. So what would you do with that, you're asking me? Well, I'm asking I'm asking in terms of courage, where he's talking about you're willing to lose a job. Right. But the aspect is is that if a person is – the aspect is you have to have courage, but also you have to be part of a team. Right. And, and I don't think in that case that, that has nothing to do with courage. That has to do with obstinance. Okay. Gee, we agree, we agree again, my yeah. golly. Yeah, and do you really mark, want mark that? this day on the calendar? Uh oh, oh, this a double agreement. That's that's amazing. Yeah. 
He also talks about beliefs drive results. Last time we were talking about I thought they drove the bus. Yeah, that too. And they drive you crazy. But last time we were talking about why. No, the book Why. Right. And And that was two times ago. You you forgot. You went nonlinear and not local again. That's right. And in order to talk about why, you got to be from Wyoming. Right. But I don't know why. But Is that a standing opinion? Standing. No, I'm sitting right now. So it's a sitting opinion. A thoughtful opinion. But the aspect is when we talk about why, we are talking about beliefs. And people have to have passion in their beliefs and why, why they have this belief. Sure. So his comment is beliefs drive results. Your beliefs, not facts, determine how well or badly you perform in any given situation. So when you're looking to hire, going back to your comment about making an incorrect hire, mm-hmm. is that you want to test what their beliefs are because their beliefs have to be common with your organization. And you know, what, the, what, are, what, are the, uh, what are the beliefs of the organization? Because you have to have some par- parallel beliefs. Oh, absolutely. If you've created the culture for the organization, your interviewing process needs to be a checklist of those and to see where your interviewee fits or not. Right. So so I, I, I agree with that. Now, some of that can be done through the, the DISC assessments and Colby and, and things like that. You can get a general feel for the individual before even meeting with them. Well, the, But okay. there's got to be that ability to converse, communication, conversation, those kinds of, of levels. You've got to be able to talk to people, and they have to be able to talk to you. If they're skittish or, or reserved, how are you really going to trust well, them that, being present? But it goes deeper than that because I, I think it goes back, what are the core values of the organization? And can you develop the interview questions to test core values? So, for example, if we say that... Uh, I thought our, that's kind of what I was saying, but, yeah, uh, but okay, you, you but, said it more in, in those terms. Well, I, I'm more business-orientated. You're more philosophical and holistic and intellectual. Yeah, I, I, I am. But you know what? I'm, I'm no, just we were gonna, talking about why, not what. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm going to play no, third. I don't, I don't know play third. I'm going to play third for a minute, okay? okay? So I don't know about that. Okay. However... You know, we were talking about uh, some things in, in one of your peer groups recently about, you know, the a little more esoteric side, which is kind of where I come from, the holistic, the, the universal, the, the even taking it to a cosmic level. Well, you know, there's a lot of leaders that rely on those things, too, that nobody ever really knows about because to admit those things to others would make you seem a little crazy. Yeah. because they don't understand it. Now, perfect example, I went to talk to a gentleman that started the Valley National Bank here in, in the Phoenix area way back when. You had a lot of interest, I bet. And I did. And the uh, gentleman's name was Carl Bimson. When I met with him, uh, I'd read an article about him in the local rag called the New Times, and he said he's just there to talk to people. Well, he was 91 at the time and still had an office in the VNB building downtown. So I had an idea for a model school that I, a cultural center and school that I wanted to go talk to him about because I wanted to okay. garner his wisdom on those kinds of things, right? Figuring that he probably knows okay, what the heck so, to do. So, so. Uh, hey, it's a story. Let me get it out here. So if you keep interrupting me, it'll just take more time. No, we'll just go to a different subject. Yeah, well. <laughs> My point is that after talking with him, he immediately made some comments about his wife helping him with the business with various things of a more esoteric nature. And it came to be a crucial part of his decision making process because of how helpful taking those types of things in were. Now, this is a 91 year old guy that had been there, done that. He was even older than you. So those kinds of things can be helpful, helpful when used wisely. Okay, well the, well, the point I was trying to get before you told your story is that in the interview process, if you test your core values and you say that our core values is that we have a family atmosphere. Right. And the question you might ask an employee, or if we have an order that has to get out tonight mm-hmm. and you have to go home for your daughter's birthday, but we have to get it out for a key customer, do you stay over time and get it out or do you go to your daughter's birthday? And it presents a major dilemma for an individual as to whether they will satisfy the core values. If the core value is that we are 
family organization, you'll say you go to, you go to your daughter's birthday. If your core value is that we take care of the customers no matter what, then you have to stay and stay. basically take, take care of the shipment. So right. you have to you have to formulate some questions that really test the core value as to whether the person really believes you know what those values are. Right. Because if they don't, you're going to have this dilemma come up. And people are not going to be satisfied when that time And occurs. a lot of the, you know, going into the small business development now and the core belief systems within that, a lot of the millennials do include more of the broad spectrum holistic perspectives because they want people there that have a similar mindset and heart set. Well, the aspect is, is that when you go to hire, you're looking for people who have that a is a higher perspective. That's right, the higher perspective. You're right. looking for people who have the same, have a similar passion or belief in your passion. Right. You're looking for people who have a similar core values. Mm -hmm. So which goes you, back to the why. Right. So you go back to the continuity. Uh, so that goes back to your comment before that if the person doesn't fit in. Uh, you made a bad hire. You know, right. You, you, because you basically you didn't drill down deep enough to find out really how they fit in or would they fit in. Mm -hmm. So so we get involved in this discussion as to what are the two, we delved off into hiring, which is my fault, but I think the two areas are number Bad one. Bad boy. No, you know, here. Slap. Hey, wait a minute. The two Sit, things are, oh, oh my God, yeah, I can see now. Okay. We'll have none of That'll that. That'll be the last violent act that you'll see or hear today. And speaking about violent acts, we're going to break for a commercial. That break is very violent. Two Small Biz Guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. Business owners want to call their own shots, make appropriate income, and control their destiny. Our passion is to help you achieve your goals. A ProPeer Advisory Board is just the thing. It's a confidential monthly meeting of non-competitive owners facilitated by a pro who has walked in your shoes. He's your mentor and tormentor moving you ahead. When you have issues or opportunities keeping you awake, where do you get help? Pro boards give support and non-biased feedback from your peers. To sample a free Pro President's board meeting, email ray at propres.com. There's no commitment or charge. Email ray at propres.com. Hi, I'm Zen Benefield with Be The Dream Transformational Life Coaching and Professional Services at BeTheDream.com. Our mission? To provide leading-edge transformational personal and business development services. Our services include life coaching, enterprise coaching, partnering facilitations, and possibilities coagulating. We've been in business since 1988. In times of massive change, you need someone who can help you adjust and transform. I can meet that challenge with you, offering a stellar skill set from serving individuals and companies for over 20 years. I invite you to peruse Be the dream.com and put me to the test fill out the coaching assessment survey and give me a call the first call is free and you can find out if i'm what you are looking for in a coach consultant or service provider call 480-633-7179 let your dreams mold future realities be the dream.com listening to two small biz guys now back to your hosts zen benefield and ray silverstein so business without the bullshit is really simple would you would you agree with that dead air oh yes it is beyond your own area of expertise all you need to be truly successful you know, let me get it out all you need to be truly successful in the business world is a handful of secrets and shortcuts. There's no mystery to being successful. No, I don't believe that. I now we're going back to belief systems. Yeah, I, I don't believe business. We're going to rock yours, no, 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 mine, but, and maybe so, our guests. So he says. I mean, we, listeners. Yeah. So is business? Do we have guest listeners. Okay. Is business really simple? Uh. You know, the aspect is if you say yes, it's getting, it's getting orders in, it's shipping them out or taking care of the, or caring, delivering the service and collecting money. That's very simplistic. But the aspect is, is to achieve that is not simple. Well, one of the things that he says is businesses, it's an ecosystem. 
Echo, okay, this, this is a holistic echo, perception. Echo, 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 echo. echo, echo. It, it's a system, 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 system. So and when you're looking at, and this goes back to Senge's work, I think, in the 90s when he introduced the uh, personal mastery, mental models, uh, learning organizations, and systems thinking. Everything fits together inside that ecosystem. And if you've got one thing out of balance, then it might kill off another unexpectedly and something that you held dear might go extinct. Well, the aspect is, I think in business, the if you say the, the th three things I just mentioned, getting business, delivering the service or product, and collecting the money, Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are that. Those three things are simple. The implementation of that and the creation of those activities are not simple. They're but not that doesn't fulfill the why. That that still, like he says, it, it's an it's an ecosystem, not a battlefield. With those three things that you mentioned, I think today that enforces or encourages more of a battlefield. Well, he's talking about the bosses as to whether you know in competition, as to uh, you know win or lose a, a war right competition you just mentioned it that's a battle well competition okay. yes no because sometimes competition now you are, do are, sound are, like a millennial yeah yes no yeah or how about no yeah, yes no. how no, about they, they, they they usually go no yeah or yeah no yeah the, no the, that's you know the preface of most statements i hear oh so it, it's yeah no <laughs> yeah we got a thumb up from our producer on that one yeah no he must have he must have millennials as kids I, or maybe I he's a millennial no yeah. he's not no he's no, I'm not going to say what he is. <laughs> We'd be hard pressed. <laughs> yeah, hard hard pressed is true. Okay, but the aspect is: is business really a battlefield? Some people look at it that way, but uh, you know, it's, it's it's. I think some sometimes business is really a question of leverage, as to do I have the leverage? Do you have enough people, places, and things to do what you want to do? Well, that's part of it, but but do I have the differentiation which creates the leverage to get the business? Do I have the right people to create the leverage to be able to implement the various strategies? Mm -hmm. uh, and that leverage could also include your core belief systems and your why. Yeah, those are all part of it. Those, those right. build into it. Do I have the financial resources to be able to implement, to have the leverage? So, you know, many, many, you know, a lot of small business, for example, don't want to borrow money from banks. But, but so many times they, they, uh, they, restrict their growth because they don't have the money to finance to take it forward so right and if all of a sudden you've got the best product on the planet and you've got all kinds of orders but you can't fulfill them because you don't have the cash flow to have the people places and things that you are like necessary that term, to do people, it places and things yeah well it's that whole possibilities coagulator thing that i have you know i put people places and things together to do stuff that's, that's mostly sounds, cool stuff because cool I stuff. choose who I work with. Cool stuff. Yeah. Gee, I, I I don't work with cool stuff. I work with stuff that's you hot. work with Zen. No hot <laughs> hot stuff. Hot stuff. Hot well, stuff. thank you. I, I'm glad. That's a nice compliment. Okay. So I, I'm he also hot he also talks about bosses and what truly great bosses believe. Well, and that was one of the things about the ecosystem. Another is a company is a community, not a machine. Yeah. So there's that sense, there's that touchy-feely side of things that builds community. That's the relationship building side of things, which is another thing that came okay. up in, in your peer group so the other day. If, so if a company is a community, not a machine, then it goes back and really contra contradicts the comment about freelancers. Because with a company's a community, why would a person want to leave a community? Well, as a freelancer, you're looking for others that you can get along with because well, of, a, it's a mindset. But right? if it's a community, you're getting along by definition of a community. Right. And if you have the right freelancers who have the skill sets that you need to complement each other in that ecosystem, then the community is an automatic because you're there working together for a common thing, utilizing your creative capacity to do so as a freelancer. An, an ecosystem kind of reminds me of Pete and repeat, but uh, he says great bosses see ca companies as collections of individual hopes and dreams all connected to a higher purpose. And the higher purpose again is the why, it's the passion, right. the belief. He also talks about management is service, not control. Great bosses see a great general direction 
then commit to obtaining the resources their employees back need to, to the get internal the job customer. Done. Yep. Okay, your employees are, are, or your staff are your internal customers, and the customers are always right. No, the customer isn't always <laughs> right. But the aspect is, but you, but you use an interesting term, which a lot of people don't follow up on, is the internal customer. Right. And in running a business, people should be aware of internal customers. Because uh, if you're on a production line, for example, the people in the next, line, next step of the production are your internal customer. Right. If you're a salesman, the people who enter the order are your internal customer. If you're a marketing department, your internal customer is the sales department. So people don't always think about these internal customers. They think about the external customer and how you have to satisfy the external customer. Well, they don't always think about it unless they perform a SWOT analysis. Well, even with SWOT right. analysis, you don't talk about internal customers. Well, that, that's a cursory approach, but it does give you that beginning sense of, okay, how do we deal with the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and sometimes trends that go along with our business because the, the strengths and opportunities are market-driven, okay. the weaknesses and... Um, See, I think it really goes back more to the company culture. So when you talk about the SWOT analysis, yeah, that's fine, but I think it really goes back to the culture of the business as to whether you form a community or not. Well, this, and people the SWOT feel analysis part of would community. give you evidence of whether you've got the, the community built in like you desired it to be, right? Okay. That, that's kind of your, your okay, reference point. The, the next one is interesting. He says, employees are peers, not children. Now, it's interesting if you talk to a lot of managers they have to, sometimes they say, Scream we have and to, holler, stomp and shout. No, but, no, or, they say, and sometimes what? to get things done, we have to treat people like children. And there is some truth to that. That uh, Well, most adults carry whatever they didn't work through as children into their adult life, and the behaviors are example of that. So the behaviors are what you're after changing, not necessarily anything else. But the, the behaviors are reflective of the attitudes that they carry. So he says, great bosses treat every employee as if he or she were the most important person in the firm. How do you do that? How do you treat everyone as if they're the most important person in the firm? I think you have to treat them as they're important, and I think you have to treat them as that they make a contribution. But how do you treat them as that they're the most important person? How you do that is when you're in conversation with them, you're in conversation with them. You're not distracted by anything else. You're fully present. Yeah, but that, means you're, but that means you're important. In other words, if I'm having a conversation with you, I'm having this conversation. Well, another thing important. they do is don't interrupt the conversation when somebody's talking. Oh, that's, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. yeah. It goes two okay. ways. Right. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do go two ways. Right. So the most important thing, how you show that is that when you're talking with people, you listen. You, you don't listen to respond. You listen. You know, and, and we're quick-witted and, and sharp enough, and we have that understanding because we've developed a relationship that allows that to take place. That's just who we are together. Now, you can't make those kinds of assumptions when you're dealing with employees and, and staff. You have to be willing to show them that authentically they pick up that you're there present with them, listening to whatever it is they have to say and responding from that place. Okay. And they need to have that same sense from you. And how do, how do you handle that when you run out of patience? You go figure out how to buy more patience. <laughs> you buy more patience. <laughs> right. You, you go to the patient <laughs> store. Yeah, you go to the buy patient more store. Patience. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Or take Blue a deep, light special on aisle three. Okay. Or you take a deep breath and say, okay. Right. Well, one of the things that I use and, and I teach clients that it, it's a really simple exercise. You put your fingertips together and you feel your heartbeat. And you take a deep breath. So then you can do that in five seconds. You can. You can take a breath and feel your heartbeat. Or at least pretend that you're going to, which will create that trigger in your mind do to they, slow you down. Do they also do that in mortuaries too? You can do it anywhere. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I well, no, just, they, they, they kind of interlink figures at that place. I was just, I was just double checking. That's all. That but, sounds like a rather dead subject. But if people really want to hit, right. But if people really want to get the heartbeat of this whole discussion, they ought to go to our website, Two Small Biz Guys, to get all this great information. Absolutely. And listen to the other shows because there are, we oftentimes will string things together. 
you know, old guys, we have a, a stream of consciousness that we kind of weave in and out of. That's right. When you say stream. Spontaneously and sporadically. Stream. We must be fly fishermen for a stream. Yeah, hey, that sounds great. Speaking <laughs> of sounding great, we're going to be right back to treat you with some more stuff from Two Small Biz Guys. Thanks for listening. Two Small Biz Guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. As a business owner, have you ever felt alone at the top? You don't have to be. Ray Silverstein has worked with many business owners for over 20 years facilitating peer advisory boards. He is the proverbial mentor and tormentor. A pro president's peer advisory board is a confidential monthly meeting of non-competitive owners that give support, feedback, and knowledge. They know the adage, all of us are smarter than one of us. He has walked in your shoes, having owned and sold two companies with sales in excess of $60 million and approximately 1,300 employees. In Young President's organization, he participated in peer advisory boards and felt it was a key to his success. His passion is to help small business owners succeed. He knows peer boards work when you are open, don't feel like you know it all, are willing to put issues on the table, and willing to take criticism. Be his guest at a pro advisory board meeting to see if it works for you. There's no commitment to join, and you'll have a great experience. To sample a free pro business owner peer board, email ray at proprez.com. That's ray at proprez.com. There's no commitment or charge. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefield and Ray Silverstein. Well, I'm going to tip the stein to be in a better boss. Okay, you are. Okay. Yeah, why do you want to be? Why, why do you want to be a better boss? Well, why would you, why would you not want to be a better boss? If you're a better boss, I like then the you're, way I am. Why? I like being the way I am. Why? How, how's what, oh, you're oh, we're back to that again. Yeah, we are. I, I'm telling you how and uh, what. Okay, I don't know. Okay, people want to be a people today and tomorrow. Okay, but the aspect is people in order. If you want to, how about now? If you want to have reduced turnover and get better results, you want to be a better boss, right? You absolutely want to be. So a better he boss. says the number one aspect is manage individuals, not numbers, and. So, so that, as a better boss, you need to understand who your co-workers, your cohorts are because you're all there together. Now, are you going to treat each other equally? Well, what's that mean? You know, equal might mean that you understand a person enough to know how to speak to them. Okay, but And that, another person you need to speak totally different to. Okay, because but, you've developed the relationships okay, in order to understand that. All right, but that's his first. That's his first aspect. But then when you go down to his third aspect. He says, "No, wait a minute. We're going to well, skip wait, one." Wait, no, I mean, this, this ties in because Ooh, I, I just said the second one. Didn't even know it. Adapt no, your style no, okay. to the individual. Yeah, but I want to talk about the the contrary aspect because Yuri's talking about. He well, says, that's my book, Zend or the Contrarian. Yeah, he says, but you're too much in agreement. He says, uh, adapt simple. Yeah, I've read my book. <laughs> adapt simple and relevant metrics. So that's he talks about. You want to complete. You want to have measurements. But then he also talks about in this first aspect, manage individuals, not numbers. So, what 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 is how do you how do you do this? Where you have numbers of measurements, you have me metrics as to what is a good performance. And when you talk about managing the individual and not the numbers, so therefore you have the numbers as to what performance is. So now you have well, to. Well, you got your metrics, which gives you the measurement right. of how the behavior is working. Okay. So now, now it comes down to the aspect of what is the communication with the individual or group as to that the metrics are not being achieved, that the job is not being done. First of all, I think a lot of small businesses don't develop metrics and therefore the employees don't know what a good job is. And they have a job description, not necessarily a job behavior. Well, okay, but the aspect is they don't have job descriptions in many cases, but, right. but even if they have a job description, they still don't know what a good job is. Uh, they, the job description tells you what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to be responsible for, but it doesn't really tell you what is a good job. And I think people want to know if they're doing a good job. They, 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 they have this feeling that they like to get recognition of a good job. They want to know what a good job is. So that's where metrics come in to help. Right. 
But, but you, you said a key word, though, is how do you communicate that? Mm -hmm. What language do you use? Now, it's all going to be English, okay, but the, the, the different types of languages depends on the individual and how you talk to them, whether the, you know, they're intellectually driven or they're more sensitive or you have to frame things, you know, in any learning style, you've got auditory kinesthetic and visual, right? So how are you going to communicate to people in those ways so that they're, that your communication is effective and as a master communicator, you're responsible for getting your message through in the ways that you intend it to be heard. Okay, that's true. And the other aspect is also asking for input and assistance as to how, what, what is needed in order to achieve the metrics. Right. Sometimes you, know, you, you establish metrics arbitrarily and you don't always have a relevant metric. And then sometimes they need a certain tool or training or background in order to achieve it. Sure. So it becomes a two-way it becomes a two-way conversation as to, okay, here's a metric. How do I how do you help me achieve it? What do you need? And then you see whether the whether the person or the individual. And there's communication uh, tools that are primal in in that uh, or integral, I guess, would be the better word for that kind of thing, like active listening. You know, making sure that you that your employee understands what you just said to them and you encourage them to reflect back to you. Now, here's here's the other constraint that often happens. Production is timeline driven. It's deadline driven. Mm -hmm. And it's the perception or perhaps even misperception that you got to do things fast and that you don't have the time necessarily to take to develop that no, kind of depth we, of, of relationship. Well, we, no, it's not the question you gotta get things done fast. You have to get you have to get things done right. right. And they have to be done on the, t on, the, on the time required. So fast may not necessarily be getting things done. So it becomes a question of getting things done right. Now it doesn't always mean having things done to perfection. It means getting things done well. Close enough for government work. Yeah. So he also says, set one priority per individual. Giving your employees multiple priorities is fostering on, or fostering on them responsibility of deciding what is really important. And the boss's job is really to, to do that. And I agree. I think that the aspect is when you give people too many priorities, you get confused. Oh, you muddle the water. Actually, absolutely. You lose focus that way. But also, he says, you got to keep your temper. What? Yeah, what are you talking about? I, I got to keep my temper. Well, what are you going to do with it? If <laughs> <laughs> oh, that We're was a, breaking more that things. Was, that was a ringer. And it's not uh, even time for a break. So in keeping your temper, what are you going to do with it? Why develop the temper to begin with? You know, if you're unable to manage your temper, then why the heck are you a manager? Okay, that goes back to EQ. Right. It goes back to emotional intelligence. And if you can't, that has a ringing effect, right? And if you can't read people and you don't know, and you and you can't communicate with them, that's when you lose your temper, and it really gets you no place. It's a it's a negative activity, right? But the thing about your temper and losing it, it's not about the employee. It's about you. Darn right. It's about you not being able to perform up to your own expectations. So walk away. Okay. So that also takes us to the next one, which we talked Joe about, Walsh. Which we talked about earlier. Measure yourself by your weakest employee, and that's what we talked about earlier, which basically I think is you know, goes back to the 20-60-20 rule. But I think it's a very interesting comment when people complain. Let's re-explain that 20-60-20 rule. Complain, okay, the 20-60-20 rule? Yeah. Uh, basically, 20% 20, 20 of your employees are very good. 60% are okay, and 20% may be a problem. And, and how, it's how you handle those 20% that are a problem that will affect the rest of the 80% right. or the 60 Right. Basically. So how but, you, how you, what, how, what you accept from the bottom 20% will indicate how that 60% will even either move up or down. So that's the 20% will always perform well. And speaking of moving up or down, we hope that we've taken you through a circuitous path through learning how to develop your business better and that business really isn't bullshit. Um, there are simple are we things done? that you can do. Are we done? Yeah, I think we are. Well, when they say bullshit, it means that in business you got to watch your step. Exactly. Or, or yeah, you know, or find, you, find better waiters. Or what you do is you go to two small biz guys and you listen to more of our stuff and get all those great tools. Absolutely. Right. 
And again, we thank you all for listening. Please, if you like the show, share it. Check out the Engage page. Hey, and that re, was and engage also, page. That, that engage, rhymed. That's right. You were engaged. And, but, I am. Also, but also read the crib notes on this great book, Business Without the Bullshit. And you can get those on the blog that we'll have, uh, that you'll see by going to the Two Small Biz Guys website. And thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Two Small Biz Guys with Zen Benefio and Ray Silverstein. You can hear Two Small Biz Guys live every Wednesday at noon or catch their show on demand anytime 24-7 right here on StarWorldWideNetworks.com.